Modern, common rail diesel engines like this one are pretty efficient and reliable, but you also need proper care and maintenance. Otherwise, you'll see an increase in fuel consumption, a significant loss of power and potentially face expensive repairs. So, in this video, we will talk about everything you need to know regarding suit buildup, why it happens, what EGRs are, do you need a catch can, and what are the ways of cleaning your intake system. After that, we will test to see if it actually makes a difference and more. I'm George and it's time for some lab work. Let's get started. So let's examine what the problem is exactly that we're facing. Well, in common rail, direct injection diesel engines from the 21st century, um, during the combustion process, the piston rings do not seal completely. So blow-by enters the crankcase alongside those piston rings and builds a pressure. That pressure needs to be released and that is done through the crankcase ventilation system right there and recirculated back into the intake manifold through a hose, a breather, uh, along with any contaminants and then back into the engine. Whoa, stop right there! Why instead of recirculating it back we just don't release it into the atmosphere and be done with it? Good question! Well, they used to, but car manufacturers have been forced to reduce emissions, making the air we breathe cleaner, but the air your engine breathes, well, dirtier. Even if you don't care about being eco-friendly, not recirculating the crankcase ventilation back into your engine will arguably make you lose some of the, that helpful vacuum that is created by the intake manifold, which increases performance. So these oily vapors that cover the intake system are not great, okay, but they are also not the end of the world, are they? However, what makes matters worse is when the exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR, introduces hot gases into that intake, baking that oil and contaminants and forming carbon deposits, carbon buildup, layer after layer of soot. And in diesel engine, there are way more gases recirculated through the EGR than there are in a petrol engine, several times more. So why do we need this EGR valve again? Good question. Well, there are two reasons, really. Mainly, firstly, it's about reducing emissions and staying legal. We all know that, so let's get this out of the way. But I don't care about this, so can I block the damn thing? You could, but first off, it's illegal. And secondly, conversely, there is another benefit of the EGR, reducing the thermal stress of the engine and, in turn, reducing fuel consumption. The logic behind this is that the recirculated gases, up to half or more, 60%, have some fuel still in them. So the ECU calculates the fuel needed only for the pure outside oxygen that enters the cylinders, alongside these gases. So the less oxygen, the lower the temperature thus reducing the thermal stress, while the fuel-soaked exhaust gases reduce fuel consumption. Well, I'm not the person to say if it's true or not, but that's the theory at least. By the way, if you have made it so far in this video, you owe it a thumbs up. All jokes aside, click that like button and consider subscribing to the channel because it really helps. Back to it now. In any case, your engine is more or less clogged up. And 
it cannot breathe properly. Simply less air can pass through. So what can you do? First things first, you need to remove that soot, build up and restore power, improve efficiency and more or less the factory performance of the vehicle. So what are the possible ways of cleaning the intake manifold? Let's start with the automated methods. An automated engine cleaning method is carbon cleaning using hydrogen. You have all heard about carbon cleaning, but will it get the job done? Well, this method primarily cleans the engine in the combustion and exhaust parts. So I'm talking uh, cylinders, injectors, valves, exhaust manifold, DPF, and so on all the way to the back. However, it is not so efficient in helping to clean the intake side of the engine and that is the part that is mold filled with soot because of the recirculated hot and oily gases. And that's what we are interested in. The second possibility is to go with chemical cleaning. This procedure of uh, soot cleaning involves an on-vehicle machine which is hooked up to the engine. Then the machine circulates a powerful chemical solution through the entire engine, breaking down and removing the soot buildup from the front of the inlet manifold all the way to the valves inside the engine in the direction of airflow, which is where it is restricted. However, the chemical cleaning might not be strong enough to deal uh, with significant soot deposits if the engine hasn't been cleaned for 20 years. This leads us to the manual method. The only solution there is to take it apart and clean it manually with some elbow grease, water and cleaning detergents. Or soak them in an ultrasonic bath, for instance. But most of us don't have access to such fancy equipment. So I will be trusting one of the reputable workshops in Varna to do the job of cleaning the intake manifold for me. But the real question is, would all this cleaning actually make a difference? In order to see what kind of difference in performance it would be to clean the intake manifold of this Hilux, we first need to see what the performance is as it is now, after 15 years of service. So, I'm going to do a very simple test. Let's call it a rolling race. From, I am currently at 50 km per hour at third gear and I'm just going to take my stopwatch to see how long it would take to get me up to 100 km per hour. So as soon as I press the gas, I'll start the stopwatch. And start. Ah, we're not going to win any races with this Hilux, are we? 80, 90, and stop. That's 12.8. Uh, after we clean the manifold, I'm going to get back to this exact stretch of highway and do this exact test in the same conditions, the same weight at the back and see if we can spot any difference. Of course, this is not a racing car, so we're not splitting milliseconds here. I just want to see if there's going to be a drop in a second or so. Apart from power and speed, we should also be able to see an improvement in the fuel economy of the vehicle. To measure that, I'm simply going to reset the averages on the computer here, drive for 20 kilometers on this stretch of highway at cruising speeds trying to maintain 90 kilometers per hour and then again check what the fuel economy is. Then after the procedure we're going to drive the same stretch under the same conditions and see if there is a change in the fuel efficiency. As simple as that. And that's about it. I just completed the course and on this exact stretch of highway my fuel economy is exactly 10 liters per hundred. Can't wait to see if there will be a difference. The procedure involves taking the intake apart, 
letting the intake manifold soak in a chemical solution and then washing off the excess carbon with water. Here is how it looked when we took it off and here is the result after cleaning it. I would say it looks as good as new. You should also pay attention to the engine side of the intake. It also needs cleaning and there are various methods to do it. Pick your preferred one to just scrape off that gunk and vacuum it out of there. Back to testing. Now with the manifold cleaned, I am here at the exact same stretch of highway to do the exact same test on third gear from 50 km per hour to 100 km per hour with the same weight at the vehicle. I have my stopwatch here, so let's go and start. Still not very fast, is it? That's 12.5 seconds. So there was no difference before and after cleaning the intake manifold in terms of acceleration and power. But what about fuel economy? Let's do the same 20 km stretch of highway, maintaining the same cruising speeds and see what the fuel economy is going to be now. I've just completed this 20 km stretch of highway and here are the results. There is a difference, but it's small. It's 9.5 liters per 100 in comparison to 10 liters before the clean. So, does intake cleaning make a difference? Should you do it? Well, it depends. It depends on the vehicle model and how active the EGR is. It depends on whether you're taking short trips, often not allowing the engine to get up to working temperature. Uh, it depends on the quality of the fuel you're using. It depends on the quality of the engine oil that you're using and if you're using any additives. In my case, there was almost no difference in the performance after cleaning the intake manifold and a very small difference in fuel economy. But it wasn't really all that clogged up, to be honest. I believe that is because I and the previous owner of the vehicle didn't use the Hilux as a daily driver, only take long trips, change the oil regularly, use quality fuel additives and etc. So for me, there was barely any difference, but for you, it might be a completely different story. In any case, we saw that there was a buildup of soot. The only question is when will it be enough to significantly restrict airflow? It might be sooner or it might be later, but at some point you will need to clean the intake system. Now that the intake is clean, how can you prevent the same soot from building up again in the future? Because we don't want to do this manual cleaning thing again soon, do we? Well, the crankcase ventilation is still recirculating oily vapors back into the intake and that EGR is still baking them with hot exhaust gases. Well, you get that hose and reroute it through a catch can which will separate the oil from the air before sending it back into the intake manifold. So the standard baffling system relies on the air that travels, passes through the catch can to cool down and separates the oil in that way. So usually it's a hollow container. It is best to get a proper catch can with an actual filter of some sort inside to make sure that a higher percentage of those oily vapors are actually caught and separated in the catch can. Some have a bronze filter, others have a paper filter, this one, 
this just has a large metal mesh inside but you need something inside don't get a hollow container so we will catch can solve the issue entirely so we can live happily ever after unlike what you have heard from the company selling these products the answer is still no it will not eliminate soot buildup entirely especially if you get a standard cheap hollow catch can i don't think it would make any difference at all if you have fitted a good catch can with a filter it will still not fix the issue entirely but it will make that soot build up much much slower so there is a reason to do it so the logical next question is why don't manufacturers install something as simple as a catch can from the factory on all vehicles well it's because catch cans need maintenance i'm talking about inspecting and draining and if you have a filter cleaning or replacing it from time to time and that might not sound like a lot but most vehicle owners are already having trouble keeping up with the regular and unavoidable maintenance such as changing the engine oil and brake pads etc if the catch can is neglected not drained in time it gets blocked and that will do much more harm than good to your engine that's why many people do not recommend catch cans at all so be warned so hopefully now you know a little bit more about how your modern common rail diesel engine works the potential issues that could arise and the pros and cons of the possible solutions you could implement i would say if you're experiencing an increase in fuel consumption and a significant loss of power then yeah don't think too much about it clean your intake system fit a good catch can and make sure your engine works as well as possible at maximum performance and efficiency that's all from me for today take care and see you next time